Smear campaigns for city council races like this are uncommon, but are worth noting given the current political climate. And we want to continue now with our election coverage, focusing now on the newly drawn 50th Congressional District. You see the map there. Current Congressman Scott Peters joins us now to talk more about the race. Uh, good to see you, Congressman. How are you? Great. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's our pleasure. So we've got six days uh, until Election yeah. Day. People are already voting, of course. But what do you do in these six days to try to get your message out, maybe uh, get in touch with some of the voters who are still deciding? We are out talking to voters. Um, we uh, had a forum with my opponent yesterday in Escondido, a new part of the district. Yeah. Um, uh, and um, you know, I'm getting around, getting out and chatting with people. We've got about we got dozens of volunteers making phone calls to get out to vote. Uh, that's what it's about right now. Uh, and this weekend we'll we'll be doing some more events. But um, you know, it's a uh, it's a fun part of the of the process is to get out and talk to people. You know, yeah. yesterday I heard a, a someone the, someone who parked my car and he said, you know, you helped my dad with his veterans benefits from Agent Orange and uh, oh, great. those kinds of things are really rewarding to hear too. So I really enjoy getting out in October for the election. It seems like we talk about homelessness, we talk about crime, border issues. Mm -hmm. uh, it's very expensive to live here, high taxes, right. gas prices and things. What are you hearing from uh, people out on the street and, and where do you want to focus your energy on trying to make all of us who live here in California live better lives? I think the economy has been a challenge for people. You know, I, I, I do know that um, in the long run, housing is a big challenge for California and for San Diego. We're doing what we can from the federal perspective to support that issue, which is mostly decided local and state. Um, but we're really, you know, one of the things we're celebrating with, with uh, President Biden is we're making big investments in chips to make sure that so those are made domestically so we're not subject to a foreign, um, foreign sourcing that really we saw during the pandemic yeah. was really disruptive for us. We also passed a big infrastructure bill. It's going to be a $1.2 trillion investment in infrastructure, which we've all been talking about for as long as I've been in Congress. We're actually going to do that. That's going to help the economy. And we're, of course, we're facing inflation right, right now. You know, we have a 100-year pandemic. Uh, inflation is a worldwide phenomenon. Sure. Um, you know, we've, we've seen President Biden cut some tariffs, which is going to lower prices for folks. Uh, we'd love to pull out of that as well. Um, our caucus, the New Dem caucus, the moderates uh, in, in, the, in the Congress, moderate Democrats, came up with an inflation reduction plan. We've got mm -hmm. some ideas about how to address that more yeah. directly in the near future. Tell me a little bit more about the housing issue. What, what is the federal government doing? What, what can be done to try to either get more housing or bring yeah. the prices down or, or bring some of the taxes down? Well, um, at the federal level, you know, one thing we, we, we're trying to do is to use the leverage of the federal government to encourage local governments to allow more housing. Mm. I've got a bill called Build More Housing Near Transit. We focused, we, we just finished a $2 trillion extension of the Midcoast Trolley Line, which I worked as a council member on and now got federal money um, uh, as, a, as a Congress member. But I realized that no one really asked the localities, what are you going to build next to it to get people to, to get better fare box recovery for taxpayers to get cars off the road? Uh, and so we're going to use the leverage of that competition for that money in the future to say, listen, if you want money from the federal government, you're going to have to tell us what you're going to put next to this investment to make sure people ride it. Uh, that's a good investment. We also do a low-income housing tax credit, which provides incentives for developers when the market doesn't to, um, to offer lower-cost housing. And we provide support for those who are um, poor, but also for veterans. Veterans need supportive housing. We've got a voucher program called Veterans Assisted Supported, uh, Supportive Housing. Yeah. Um, previous administration tried to cut that. We stopped that. And we want, okay. we want to make sure that veterans are off the streets. Let me quickly ask you a little bit about Coronado. I know that's part of your district, yeah. and, and we do these stories about the Tijuana River yeah. Valley. Uh, they've got to shut down the beaches there as well as in Imperial Beach. Uh, and immigration, uh, what, what can you do to help folks out in those areas? Well, the sewage is tremendously frustrating, and I will say that we've never been in a better place to deal with it than we are now. We've been appropriating money before the USMCA trade agreement to start the work for planning. We got $300 million associated with that trade agreement for construction. The Mexican government, to their credit, has committed another $150 million enforceable by treaty to deal with the issues on their side. It's going to take a few years to do that construction, but right now we're, we're implementing some, some work in the short term in the single-digit millions of dollars to make sure that we, we're open, have the beaches open next summer. I think that's going to be, make a yeah, big difference. A lot of issues to tackle. Representative Scott right. Peters, good to see you. Thanks for coming by. Thanks so much. I right. encourage everyone to vote. Absolutely. Thank yeah. you. So as a reminder, Scott Peters facing uh, Corey Gustafson. You see them there, the 50th Congressional District seat. Hunter.